So we'll have story time. Good morning, ladies. I had a story today that I thought about this week because I was out and about this week and my air conditioner in the car stopped working. Well, it didn't stop working, it just stopped blowing cool air. That can be very hard on a person my age. Anyway, I got to thinking about a story I heard about a man that lived up north, and it was in the midst of winter. I mean, it was, temperature was sub-zero. Anyone lived like that when the temperature was sub-zero? I mean, it's really cold. I raised, I was raised up in Kentucky, so it got cold, didn't get that cold. But I can remember mornings when I was going to school, and it was so cold that I wore sweaters and coats and scarves around my neck and over my head, and I wore pants underneath my dress. Because in those days, we had to wear dresses to school. So up north can be kind of tough. And this story happens on one of those days when it was really, really cold, and the wind was blowing, and that always makes it worse. Because when the man was coming home from work, he took his coat and he gathered it up around him, and he had a scarf around his neck, and the wind was blowing so hard that the scarf was even blowing in the wind. But he only had a little ways to go, so he was huddled against the wind, trying to make it home. But he heard something, and then he saw something. There was a poor dog huddled over behind a telephone pole. And when he got closer and he looked, he could see that somebody had tied a tin can to his tail. That's a challenge prank. But anyway, the poor thing had run and run, trying to get rid of that annoying sound behind him until he got himself all tangled up in something else, and he couldn't go any further, and he was stuck right there, and he was shivering. It was so cold. So the man thought, well, you know, he can't last long if, in that situation. So he went over to the dog, and he bent down, and he reached his hand out, and he called to him. He said, come on, boy, come on, come on. And the dog was kind of suspicious at first, but he gradually inched a little bit closer and a little bit closer until he was finally underneath the man's hand. And the man stroked it. And he talked to it really kindly and softly. And finally the, the dog was comfortable <coughs> enough to be right up next to him. And the man lifted him up and put him inside his coat and carried him home. Well, when he got home, his wife was there, and he ex quite explained to him quickly why, why he was bringing this freezing cold, homeless, shivering, hungry dog home. And the wife said, well, you know, then we could get a blanket and put it by the stove. And they did. And then she warmed up some milk for him and put some bread in it and some scraps that she had and put it over there next to him. And you know what he did? He gobbled it up like he hadn't eaten in days. And when he was all done, he wagged his tail a little bit because he still didn't know what was giving this wonderful blessing of food and warmth. Well, the couple went upstairs, and when they came back down the next morning for breakfast, they came into the kitchen, the dog looked up and wagged his tail a little bit more enthusiastically. He 
was such a beautiful looking dog. He was bony and had definitely been on his own for a while. You know, and the man looked at his wife, and his wife looked at the man, and decided right then and there they were going to have to make this dog a member of the family. So, if you're going to have a dog in the house, it's got to have a name, right? So they thought about it for a while. I mean, they could have called him Bones, because he certainly had plenty of those showing. But you know what they finally decided on? Monarch. I guess because he had sort of a regal standing. And, and not only that, but you know, monarch is a type of butterfly. A butterfly that starts out as an ugly caterpillar, works itself into a cocoon, and then finally emerged as a beautiful winged creature. So, monarch was his name. And you know, the name stuck because with good food and loving care, his eyes became clear, his nose became cold and moist, and you know, his coat, it became silky and soft and shiny. You know, he was a happy, contented dog. And he wagged his tail happily every time somebody looked at him. You know, as he stayed there, he started doing something very unusual. At 4.30 every day, he would go to the door and he'd scratch until the wife would let him outside. And then he'd race to the gate and he'd sit there and he'd wait for his master to come home. You know, and when he could hear the car coming, he would start getting really excited and jumping around and wagging his tail and barking. I mean, he was really excited. And when his master came in, he would run to him and nestle up against him. And you know what he did? He followed his master around the house the whole evening after that. And you know, every time he looked and his master, he looked at him with loving eyes. Now, why do you suppose that Monarch loved his master? He did. He saved him, didn't he? That was one thing. And he cared for him. And, and he was always there for him, right? Well, Monarch the dog differs from most of us because he knows that his master saved him. And his only response was expressions of his feeling. Monarch love for the man who had saved him from perishing was spontaneous and sincere. And you know, that's the way God wants us to feel about him. Now, it may not be obvious to us at first how God saved us, but as we understand it, we come to understand that he saved us from the sin that condemns us to death because we're all sinners. Now, it wasn't an easy thing for God to do, but it was his love for us that made him do it. It's a love that's kind of hard for us to comprehend. Now, Jesus approaches us much like the man in the story. First of all, he came down to our level and he reached out to us. You know, when I came in today, we had new doors back there. But you know what? They don't have knobs on them. And I thought, Reminds me of the picture I saw of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. And the interesting thing about that picture is there's no doorknob on his side. We have to open that door ourselves. So the man he could have maybe grabbed the dog by the collar, but he didn't do that. He called him. He compelled him. 
come to him. So, and just like the man in the, in the story, Jesus wraps us up in his cloak of righteousness. Pretty good, right? So that we can go home with him. And so we should be waiting and looking for our master to come. Right? So, can we look for our master like monarch did? Because you know, monarchs also means royalty. And we are, after all, children of God, the child of the king. Okay. Is there anybody that would like to pray today for me? Yeah.